Okay, hey class. Um, this is a lecture and presentation is on chapter eight of our political science book, Governors of the United States. So the first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna go over the goals of our lecture because for each presentation you must know what you need to key in on, what you need to make sure you take good notes. Um not just for the test, but to gain general understanding of this topic. So the first thing is we're going to review some of the governors. How many, how many know of some governors, what states they're in, um, basically that and their job descriptions, what they do in office, what they can't do, their roles, and what type of powers they have that differ from, let's say, other people in office, such as your local county people or president of the United States. Um, so to start off, we're going to play a little game. It's called, Can You Name Any Current Governors? So I'm going to show you a picture of the governor. Some of these governors are in the news lately or in frequent or very frequently. So we'll see how many of you know the correct answer. So first, um, we're going to take a couple minutes. Uh, write down some governors you know, uh, some things they've done, laws they've passed, things they supported and lobbied for, and then you must get at least three to get credit today. So think very hard. Um, make sure that you have some idea of what they did in office. And then we're going to play a game, name that governor. So, for this game, like I said, I'm going to show you a picture. You guess their name. So first, we have Terry McCulloch from Virginia. Next, we have Scott Walker from Wisconsin. Next. We have Andrew Cuomo from New York, another governor. He's always in the news, so you guys should have some idea who he is. Yep, Chris Christie of New Jersey. This man ran for, tried to run for president, but he, uh, he's he's bit, he's a big news guy as well. Bobby Jindal from Louisiana, and last. We have Nikki Haley from South Carolina. Does anyone have any ideas on what government governors do? Sorry. So basically, take two minutes, write down as many bullet points to what you think they do. Person with the most answers gets a bonus point. Time starts now. So after writing down, let's hear some answers. Okay, so governors have a lot of jobs. For example, they're chief legislators. They have enormous work. They have enormous influence on the work they do with other legislators. They lobby for different things. They work with committees to pass, to pass bills pertaining to things that they all have in common. They also have the power to veto proposed laws from other legislators and other committees. Um, but they listen to their constituents a lot and try to make them happy. Therefore, the happier they make the people they're representing, the longer they stay in office. Now, in elementary school, you're in Boy Scouts. Um, I know people have written letters to the governors about issues they've had or asking for uh recommend not a recommendation but uh thank you letter for graduating uh letter of acknowledgement um different types of things uh has anyone written a letter to the governor before and this type of interaction between you and the governor allows one to you know feel feel closer and friendlier with the governor and Feel like they actually care about the people they're representing and they're not just a number 
So I'm pretty nice. See this man just relaxing in his nice big office. Just kidding. It's not all that easy. The head of state agencies. So that means they appoint people to run state departments. And these departments each have a set amount of money they get and they get to decide how much money goes to which state department. Uh, so roads, public schools, um, you know, different type of thing, unemployment, anything you can think of. Um, these governors decide where the money goes and they can also ask the federal government for more money. Um, they're the chief spokesman of the state. So for example, anything ever happens for the state they're the first ones to send out press releases going from the media answer questions uh they love to boost themselves because this helps their publicity and helps them stay in office about um the job they're doing whether it's helping companies uh getting unemployment rates up um helping schools and kids graduate, anything you can think of helping build more roads, make the roads less uh, less filled with traffic. Uh, but they have a lot more, a lot of other jobs, so they're the party chief. Now, since they represent their party as the head of the state, they're, they're very influential people in D.C. Like I said, they seek more federal money for their states, so as much money as they can get, they're going to take because it allows them to have more freedom with what they do, what department they put it in, and it really works well with the people because the people want more things. So this gives them the freedom to create new programs, make programs better. Anything the people want, they have the opportunity to get if the state can bring in more money, and that's why the governors lobby to the federal government. They also get money from... Um, you know, their offices, people, donations, uh, using media, social media is big now, Twitter, whatever, you, whatever, um, whatever apps you guys use nowadays, but basically all of this is for their publicity, for them to promote themselves, for people to interact with them and just interaction and support helps them raise money for them to spend in different areas of the state, powers of the government, there's a little mnemonic device to help remember the three powers, so for our information, it's beneficial for us to know the powers of the governor, to know what they can and can't do, so for stands for formal powers, O stands for other powers, and the I stands for informal powers. For our information, if you remember the F, the O, and the I, you'll be able to memorize these powers. So, so foremost powers is, so like I was saying, these formal powers are given strictly by the documents the state has written, and these powers are listed specifically saying they can do this, can do that. So they can veto legislation, um, like we talked about earlier, point heads of state departments, state agencies, committees, um, everything is in written and they must abide by these rules. The other powers are, you know, other things they can do so they can grant pardons, power to call special sessions of legis uh, legislature. So these are also, um, in these documents saying they can do this. Um, power to prepare state budgets, that's something they must do. So all these are basically categorized together. Now the informal powers are different because these are not written, but there's things they they can and basically must do. Um, be, the, be in the media, persuade other party members to agree and hop on their train. Um, it's not written, but it's things that have been done before that they also follow in suit.
governors before them have done it, so they're going to do it too. Um, to help other people stay in office, so why not continue the trend, you know? Um, but social media and campaigning that way and and getting your ideas out is very popular nowadays, especially because of the use and the, the wide range of people it can influence. One of the last things they do, one of their duties is um, to be the commander in chief, so this picture shows some of the National Guard members. And basically, the National Guard is there's one in every state, and the president has the power to federalize it in case of a national emergency. Um, but basically, the governors can't use them to promote their well being, it must be used in very specific instances, such as hurricanes, uh, riots. So when Hurricane Katrina happened, the governor of Louisiana was, he called the National Guard to come save people from their houses, um, from the rooftops, anywhere you can find people. The National Guard not is, is militarily trained, but also basically rescue trained as well. So they're very useful, especially in emergencies. They're very quick um, and Governors usually have basically all the freedom in the world to use it. The last duties they have, um, they can impeach. So federal uh, office members, they can impeach with the vote if they collectively agree. Um, recall elections, executive orders, those type of things. Um, basically, governors are very powerful people in this country. And without them, uh, states wouldn't be able to be as strong as they are um, because these people really listen to their constituents and try to do the best they can for not only them but their people.